Hi there, good to see you again and thanks for joining me. Well, the IVA date is rapidly approaching. I think we're about two and a half to three weeks away and we need to uh, prep this car to make it safer on the road anyway and also to uh, help pass its uh, IVA test. And I'm also eager to get that uh, extra start in uh, just to make sure that there's no leaks or uh, any undue issues uh, before I drive it to the IVA centre. So uh, with that in mind, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we're looking at is the rear reflectors. Now you'll need these as well for uh, future MOTs as well as your IVA test. Uh, so uh, always good to know how to fit these or keep them fitted. Uh, safety is paramount. I actually think these look really nice and clean. Um, so this is a quick fitting. Basically these are reflectors here, they all disassemble. I put a screw through the back and uh, put a washer and uh, one of these flat nuts uh, on, 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 the, uh, on the inside and just do it up and it looks really awesome. Um, so if I wasn't having uh, jack lifters or uh, nudge bars etc, um, I would probably do something like that permanently. Uh, the other solution is, because I am having jack lifters, but I didn't want to fit these just yet because it means unscrewing these yet again. And uh, to get this one out, I have to take the take the battery out really to get good access to the back there. Um, but um, you can just make a little aluminium template here, um, little finger there that fits behind uh, one of these lights and uh, just sits uh, just sits next to it and you can hardly see the bracket when it's fitted and it looks really really quite cool just uh just sat there uh up here like that so that's another solution uh if you wanted something maybe more permanently fitted i think it looks really good it's on my previous cars i think certainly for the iva but this is the first time i've uh, fitted this one just here all right, straight into looking at sharp edges and radiuses. Uh, these vents here are quite sharp and will fail the radius test. So you need to be putting on some uh, U-shaped uh, trim, which you can buy in kind of meter, two meter lengths. This is quite a, quite a firm, hard one. And uh, cut it into the required lengths and put a bit onto each of these uh, veins here uh, on both sides. So make sure you do that. Uh, the next bit to look at is this section of the top of the windscreen. I think because of this centre stay, you need to get a little bit of a tube and just uh, fit it uh, into the channel uh, just around this area here, which I'll obviously spend a bit more time on uh, off video, but uh, put that in there. And uh, along with the uh, radius and things that stick out, you need to be uh, looking at this um, section here of the filler cap. Now, if you uh, bought this from Brasscraft, you'll be supplied with a little rubber end, and that is specifically so we can put that on there and uh, pass the IVA test. Right, in the engine bay, which I'm sure we'll circle back to again at some point, uh, we need to make sure that we've got our VIN plates down here and that we know where the number of the engine is on the engine so that we can direct the uh, examiner to that and also where it's stamped into the chassis member as well. Uh, certainly for AKs it's on this front right. And make sure you have a very visible clean sticker marking uh, dot four fluid only for the brake and uh, and uh, re other reservoir there for the uh, for the clutch. Okay, coming in now, uh, we've done a couple more things. So uh, first of all, my rear view mirror, uh, I think that had a slightly sharp radius. So I've put some rubber trim around there. Have actually used this mirror a couple of times before, uh, so no issues there. And then we've got the seats fitted. Now, uh, the IVA requirements are that uh, the harness is higher than the occupant's shoulders. So they're not coming from lower down and then up over someone's shoulders because in case of an accident, they'd pull and squish down. So they've got to be kind of higher, if you like. Now, uh, the IVA Centre will put an attachment into, into the seat area and um, that'll show uh, the height of an average person's shoulders, I believe. And what I've done, uh, the base of these seats was really quite padded. So I've just taken the base out and put a nice bit of uh, trim in there. To, um, so when the uh, uh, apparatus is put in, it will come down lower, so lower than the point of um, where these uh, harnesses are fitted. 
and that should be uh, that should be okay in a pass. Also, very important, you need a headrest as well. Now, of course, you can get all these IVA passable features uh, in a box from um, from AK for an, uh, an amount of money. Um, their seats actually also, if you uh, have the trim done by AK, their seats have studs sticking out the back for which an attachment with a headrest can be fitted and then removed afterwards. Uh, I do highly recommend though a headrest for whiplash and everything. Um, so I might look at some permanent nice seats with a headrest because I think that's pretty important. So, uh, so there you go, uh, that's what I've done uh, for now and uh, now we're going to move on to uh, headlights. All right, so a little bit tight around the front of the car here. Um, so first of all, splitter is required. Um, that can be anything. You can even get use a bit of, um, I don't know, chrome uh, uh, hanging rail, if you like, from B&Q and uh, put that across. But uh, AK do, a, do a quite a nice splitter uh, here. Um, so that needs to be dead in the middle uh, so that the IVA's testing sphere of about 10 centimetres, I think, cannot uh, uh, go, go all the way through and uh, is obstructed by the um, splitter. So we've done that. Now, uh, the headlights is one of the few things you are able to mess about with at, uh, in the IVA centre. So uh, I try and get it as accurately as possible. And of course, if you're able to take your car to um, to an MOT test center, they'll do the lights for you and do, and do your tracking and everything else. So uh, make sure you've got a nice, uh, I think four degree or four mil toe in uh, on, on the front wheels, uh, which you also need so that uh, the car attempts to pull itself straight after being in a turn. So, um, so yeah, uh, you can get that done at MOT Test Centre. Um, I'll sh tell you a different method I use for adjusting the toe-in. And for my headlights, because you are allowed to mess about at the IVA Test Centre, I get them as good as possible in the garage. And all I do is put a bit of cardboard up and uh, I make it absolutely horizontal and see where the beam pattern is being uh, displayed. And then I can adjust uh, the the beam to um, uh, uh, I can I can either adjust it uh, in in and out uh, or up and down as well. So that's something I'm going to do uh, here. Make sure the cardboard's dead upright, uh, same distance for each one, and um, and do do the best you can. And then uh, you can do it just tweaking a little adjustment. Remember to take uh, the correct screwdriver to take off your chrome ring, which you need to be fitted um, so you don't have any sharp edges. But you, uh, if you need to take that off uh, to adjust, then bring all the correct screwdrivers. And the next thing is um, your indicators need to be a certain height. Now, uh, you can adjust this a little bit by adjusting the suspension upwards, obviously. However, that's an awful lot of turns and uh, will only get you so far. So you need to um, show that the indicators are a certain height and you can't have any bit of the indicator below that minimum height, which is a bit of a shame because you would have thought if there's more light available, the better. But no, you, you've got to make sure there's no indicator below the minimum height. So you've got to do this in a non-removable way. So simply painted uh, the inside of my indicators here, um, same as uh, AK do. And uh, by fitting that, when the indicators show, it won't show in this bottom half. It will only show in the top half, which is above the minimum height. Now, I have done this in a kind of water-based paint so kind of hoping that that is scrub out outable uh, otherwise i'll simply buy some more lenses no problem at all but uh just need to go over that a couple more times test make sure there's no light coming through in that bottom half all right so with my half painted uh indicators uh i think the recent directions are the light needs to be at least 35 centimeters up from the ground i think 35 actually hits about here on my car but uh, we've gone for a half painted anyway. Um, so that's all fine. Uh, what else have I done? I've just programmed the Speedo. Uh, so there's instructions on my website to how to program the uh, Smith Speedo. Something to do with uh, measuring the full, uh, a full one um, rotation 
uh, of the tyre in inches times your diff, do something else, uh, some other calculations, and you come up with a number, um, a five or six digit number, which you can put into your, uh, into your speedo. So check that out. Um, and obviously the instructions are on the uh, Smith's website as well for uh, programming that. What else have I done? Um, not a lot else. Uh, so we're now looking at the towing of the car. Now, um, I'm not gonna spend too long on this because I don't wanna be liable for any mistakes that, that happen, but the instruction seems to be that you, you set up um, a piece of string from the back wheels. It's gotta be about halfway, or it has to be halfway up. And um, then you set the string so it's barely touching, or, or it's just touching uh, front and back so that you know that the string is running parallel. So I just need to just adjust this string in, you know, a, half, a mil or so. And um, you do that on, the, on both sides, and then you can take a measurement from the string um, to, to the wheel, and at the, front and, uh, at, the, at the front of the wheel and at the back of the wheel. And you basically just um, do an extra four mil, so it's just towing in on the front or something like that. Again, look it up, get some advice, take it to an MOT center, get it done properly. Um, but that is a loose instruction. And then uh, hopefully that way you need to check that uh, the tire isn't rubbing on full lock either way. And by having it slightly toe in, it shouldn't uh, rub on the back, uh, which is the, the, the troublesome point. So you should be okay there. And also when you're sort of coming out of a turn, it will want to straighten up uh, on its own. And that's the whole idea. Um, so that is that, good luck. All right, moving on here. So we're having quite a good time. Uh, another directive is you need to have enough space shown for a standard size uh, number plate here. So with the uh, light in its normal position, it wouldn't. So uh, AK uh, in their pack that you can uh, rent if you like um, have a number plate light uh, that raises up like this but uh, unfortunately that's all booked out so I've had to make my own basically uh, I've got a sheet of metal here uh, with the light on it and I did cut out a, a triangle of, uh, of, um, of foam behind here and coated it with um, a bit of P40 or P38 or something the fine one uh, just to make that shape um, and then I've stuck over there a bit of two mil rubber so that it looks like it's sort of molded into the body a little bit and there's no sharp edges obviously around here. So uh, that's pretty much the same as uh, AK's, um, if not a little bit, a little bit nicer, I don't know. Um, and then uh, obviously my wires come up behind this plate and go into the light, so that's all fine. Um, on AKs, I think the wires come out of this hole and then go up into, into the light. So you also have to sort of cover over the wires as well in case they don't like that. But I've, I've got around that. So I'm pretty pleased with that. Um, so something else that has come up is um, I found my horn's not working. Um, I'm not sure if it ever worked. I'm pretty sure it, it did because I would have tested it when I first fitted it. Um, anyway, it uh, transpires that the problem is that um, you're meant to earth uh, the, the horn. Uh, obviously, um, and then when the horn is pressed, then uh, it makes uh, it makes uh, it makes a circuit. Um, however, my steering column is not earthing, and the reason for that is is because I cut out the uh, steering lock component, the brass section that would uh, lock into the steering lock. I guess it's it's always kind of rubbing or making a contact um, on it because there's a spring that holds it up against uh, the, 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 uh, the column. Since removing that, because I didn't want any uh, uh, problems with it coming on or knocking into, into the hole and my steering locking, uh, it seems that the, the first part of the column is kind of um, uh, separate to the, to the car, uh, isolated from the rest of the car, and that's because it's it's probably rotating in a couple of uh, in, inside a couple of nylon collars. But then also the coupling between uh, the first part of the steering column and the second part that goes down to your steering rack, 
uh, has got a big rubber, uh, a rubber flexible joint. So that's isolating this first part of the column. So the fix is a simple loop, a simple length of wire, literally five centimeters long, a couple of ring terminals on each end, and you just have to undo one bolt on each side of the rubber block, uh, attach this wire, uh, and uh, put your put your bolts back in, and uh, that that will make the connection to the rest of the car. So hopefully you've got that, um, but that is that is the fix. All right then, so we're cutting straight to it. So I've been here since 7am uh, at uh, the DVSAE test centre in Yedin and uh, wouldn't you know it, everything was great, emissions are great, um, all the uh, parts that uh, we put on uh, to uh, make sure our car is safe uh, is all fantastic. Um, wing mirrors, padded steering wheel, etc, etc, uh, all fantastic. Uh, my um, my uh, uh, um, reflectors were, were too far away uh, of, on the car, um, more than 400, more than 400 away from the very edge of the car. So he let me um, uh, double side tape them um, to, to, to the car. Um, so that's fine. So that was all great. And basically the car passed apart from the electronic handbrake. <laughs> So it seems that uh, when the ignition is, is, is on and you engage the electronic handbrake and then you turn the ignition off, you should not be able to disengage the handbrake. And by pressing the button, it does disengage. So I happen to think I might have a faulty switch. Uh, it gave different sort of feedback depending on how I sort of jammed my finger up behind the dash. Uh, so, so that's it really, uh, that's a fail just on electronic handbrake switch, which is another £90 retest and another early morning. But uh, I've got to say I'm well pleased that the emissions are all good, all my brakes passed with flying colours. Uh, car, you know, basically was, uh, was awesome and uh, he said he enjoyed driving it around the test centre doing his tests. So there we go, um, right, uh, watch this space and uh, we'll make those changes. Well, it's only 8.30, but we're back already from our retest. So uh, the fault in the end was actually a failed uh, knockoff Savage switch for the parking brake. Replaced it in seconds, all working as it should. Uh, and that is, uh, to be clear, to be able to in be engaged with the ignition off, but not disengaged with the ignition off. And obviously with the ignition on, it can go on and off. So that's how it's meant to be working. Uh, so really pleased with that. Uh, the guys were great at the test centre. Another early morning, so uh, excuse the hair, but uh, got the all important um, bit of paper so we can apply for our registration number now. So I'm really chuffed. Let me just show you uh, come, uh, some of the observations that they made as well. Okay, so just quick run around. So uh, so yes, like I said, the fault was, uh, was a knockoff, uh, one of these savage billet switches. Um, so replaced with a, a worthy item and all good. Uh, so obviously always travel with uh, plenty of tools and things uh, that we can use in case uh, we get a chance to make right any of the, uh, uh, any issues. Um, I did have to adjust my headlights whilst I was in the test centre um, uh, the first time round. Uh, so that was all fine. A uh, couple of the things that he would have passed, um, but he added added to um, the list to be fixed since I had the handbrake issue. But if, if I didn't have that, he would have passed um, uh, placement of my um, uh, reflectors here. So I'd previously mounted them here. They were just on the border of 400 mil from the outside of the car in. So he would have let me go or told me just to nip down to the local Halfords to get some stick on reflectors. Um, but as it failed uh, on a more significant item, then uh, then I chose just to mount these correctly. Uh, so he was happy with that. And the only other thing that he had a problem with, he wanted um, a cover on the terminal of the alternator. And that is basically just a little, little orange cap that I put on uh, bolt ends and rod ends and he just wanted that, that on there as well. So I put that on there and we are all clear. So like I said, got the bit of paper, um, uh, which is great. Uh, the rest of the car is absolutely awesome. 
I've just been churning around the uh, M25 and M3, and um, and uh, this thing is, uh, is is amazing and runs so nicely. I uh, had some tunes playing as well, so Bluetooth into the stereo. Had some tunes easily. Uh, I was just rocking out to them. Um, so uh, that, that was amazing. A little bit left side bias, because uh, I guess the right hand side is is a bit hidden, but uh, I can adjust that in the um, in the fader and uh, balance uh, controls. So really, really chuffed actually. So it's all good. So what's next? All right, so I think we're gonna wrap this video up and in the next video, I'm just gonna put on a few of the nice things uh, to really make this Cobra uh, stand out from the crowd. Uh, some of the basic stuff like spinners on the wheels and, uh, and the wing mirrors and uh, we'll see what else we can do for the uh, interior. But uh, for now, I'll see you again.